Hi everybody, it is Dana and Kimber. She's 10 weeks old. She can't keep her eyes open. <laughs> Are you tuckered out? Mm, you sweepy? Okay, we go sweep. Um, I want to talk to you about using your dog's name, okay? Um, for me, I want the name to be an alert. A, I'm talking to you as an individual, right? So don't use their name as an action. Don't let it become an action. Um, in the first few days of starting to name your dog, they might start to show up, but it's really important that as training progresses, that their name is not associated with an action. So for example, what I mean by that is I've seen dogs where when you say their name, they are in motion as if you have issued a recall, okay? I have seen dogs where when you say their name, they cower down like they know they're about to be in trouble. It's really important that we use it only as an interruption and attention getter, right? So just a minute ago, Kimber was chewing on the plant, <laughs> right? So I said, Kimber, and she turned around to look at me to see what I was doing. And that was the end of it. I didn't, didn't create an action out of that. I just interrupted what she was doing. As we advance into real training and more obedience work, right? That normally happens for me around, I don't know, 16 to 20 weeks where we really get more disciplined in the training. I see a lot of people who will try to use the dog's name before every single command. You don't have to do that. If you've got your dog's attention already, they're working and engaged with you, you don't have to throw that name out as Kimber sit, Kimber down, Kimber come, Kimber whatever, right? Um, you can use it to say, I'm talking to you. And to make the distinction in multiple dog households, Kimber come, right? Kimber leave it, Kimber whatever. And the other dogs know you're not talking to them, right? It, we really need to layer all of that together and that comes with training. I will say that when I do distraction proofing training, um, I will let a dog get completely distracted, focused his attention elsewhere, and I'll pop out a command, come, right? And I want them to have heard me and make a U-turn and head my way. If Poppy, for example, is in the middle of a big game of play um, and I say her name, I'm giving an alert because she's very busy. She's distracted, right? She's really um, doing something other than just holding an obedience command, right? So I'll give the opportunity for her to hear me and then I'll give that command. But if she's just in a sit stay or down stay, even if she's at distance from me and I call her name, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Let's imagine that she's um, 50 to 100 feet out from me and she's in a sit stay or a down stay. And I say, come, she's moving. I don't have to give her name because we are actively working. There's a big difference in she's, completely disengaged, doing something completely free and, and different than the work, then I'll alert her name that I want it to be her. Or if I'm in the house and I've got multiple dogs, right? If I take them all into the kitchen and say, sit, I want all the heinies to hit the ground. If I say, poppy down, Huey sit, Howie roll over, then they're all going to do something different. So that becomes just part of the process of training and the work that we need to do. Yes, may I help you? I also have an all stop <laughs> at my house. And um, when they hear me shout out, hey, and it's, it's a loud, big interrupter, 
And all my dogs will turn around and look at me like, all right, who did it? What me? Who did it? <laughs> but I want attention from everybody. She heard that yesterday for the first time and she too stopped. So it's all about how and when you use these, the, 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 the tonal portion of that. And I'll say this, we do not need to be intimidating or threatening or punitive when, when we have those words. There doesn't have to be this big discipline that follows after. Um, it just is a big interruption. And then, Poppy, come, Huey, leave it. Whatever those pieces of the puzzle might be, for me, that all stop command is, I need to figure out who's doing what, what's going on, um, interrupt whatever they're doing, and give myself a moment to figure it out, right? So we even did that in the board and train kennel when we had dogs played in the yard. If they heard hay, it was like, break. <laughs> Everybody's got to go somewhere. So she's tired. So again, I just want you to think about your dog's name. Not what it is, but when you use it, why you used it, how it sounded, and what took place following it, okay? It's a big deal, and a lot of people have made some big mistakes in that, so much so that over time, there have been a number of clients, I said, you, you have to change your dog's name. That name has become such a negative association for him, we can't use it anymore. I've seen that, okay? So this little nugget's tired, she's fallen asleep, so this means she's going to her crate, so that we continue our crate training practice. We'll talk to you soon.